Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Simply Colorful Fibercast. Today's date is July 29th, 2016. My name is Lynn Marquardt, and I'm your host. And welcome. I'm so glad you could join me, and I'm glad I could join you. I apologize for not being here last week. I was on the trade show floor, and I'll tell you all about that. So. Um, we're going to get back to working on our rug. As everyone remembers, or I hope, if you if this is your first time tuning into Fibercast, Fibercast is nothing more than a virtual sewing bee. It's all of us from around the world getting together at 8 p.m. Eastern every Friday night and for 60 minutes working on something fiber related. For me, it's going to be this braided rug that I'm doing for the Hillmans or for the Greens. And it was a tradition that got started by Mr. Hillman's mother. Grandma Butcher and uh, Mabel Johnson made rugs from their old clothing and um, it's just something that so grandma's so Elise gave me some of her family's clothes and asked me to make her a rug so that's what we're doing so welcome I hope everyone's had a great week and let's see one two three I have to count what we do is Every row, as you may remember, or for those of you who have made braided rugs, you could probably teach me. This is my first full-fledged braided rug. But basically what I've learned is that every row that you go around, that number row, you lace minus one, and then you skip one. So for example, what I mean by that is this is our 15th row, so I'm lacing 14, and then I'm skipping a loop. And I'm lacing 14 and I'm skipping a rope, uh, uh, a little knot. And that creates a flat rug if all goes well. Oh, so I've braided. This is how far I've braided so far. And I thought we would just keep going around and I encourage you to pull out a project. It really is amazing what we get done in 60 minutes. And I'm just going to keep going here, but I need to make sure. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So this orange one I'm going to skip. And that's all there is to it. I've been using this glove to pull. It does a number on my pinky. You really, remember I was, we were joking about how it took a lot of strength, but if, if I had been on the prairie churning butter and picking my crops or doing whatever else I was doing, washing my laundry, this would not be as big a deal. But since I spend a lot of time sitting either in front of the computer or uh, in front of customers or in the case of today on an airplane, it's good for my muscles to get a little workout. Yes, I left San Francisco this morning. I was in such a deep sleep. And my alarm went off at 3 o'clock their time, which was really 6 o'clock our time here on the East Coast, so I shouldn't be belly aching that much. And it was a nonstop flight, and I touched down in Boston at quarter to 3. So it was a full flight, that's for sure. Cute little girl sat next to me. Um... And so that's that. So now I'm back in Hopkinton. I hope you all have had a good week. As always, post on the Simply Colorful Facebook page or on the Google page or send me email to lmarquedant at gmail.com. I'll spell it L-M-A-R-Q-U-E-D-A-N-T. Send a picture of what you're working on or just say hi. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, Okay, 15. That's what I'm going to skip. So I'm putting a pin in. Sarah, if you're out there, have a wonderful time in Alaska. I was one of my co-workers, Christine. She had taken her family or her family had all gone up to Alaska for the first couple of weeks or 10 days in July. And she said it was beautiful. So now is a beautiful time to get up there, I understand. Alexa Lee, if you're out there, call in. I see you. <laughs> Alexa Lee's mother, if you're out there, hi. My mother, hi. 
Can you believe it's almost August 1st? I had every intention this um, this winter, and I think I told everyone that I had big intentions of spending more time down with my mother this summer and working remotely and yada, yada, yada. But as it turns out, I'm actually going to be here for the first half of August and then go down there for a week. So for the first couple, for the first few weeks in a in a long time it seems I will be home for the next couple of weeks. And that's good. Before San Francisco, I think I told you, oh, so why was I not here last week? I was on that trade show floor at the Long Beach Convention Center in LA. And um, man, LA is big. And I thank you for those of you who reached out and said you were close by. That was fun. Anyhow, we were, it was the county commissioners that were meeting from across the country, and it happened that from four to six, their time, they had an opening reception on what they call the exhibit floor. So it's not a fancy exhibit floor like a uh, consumer electronics show. It literally is just a lot of uh, purchasing cooperatives and technology vendors and equipment vendors serving communities, emergency responder vendors, like they literally had police interceptor cars there that, uh, you know, are all about, they're equipping police cars nowadays, I think I've told you this, with technology that can send out pings to other drivers on the road. So even before a police officer pulls you over, they have pinged your registration and probably discovered most likely who's driving whether you're registered, etc. Anyway, they have these fancy interceptor cars. They call it because they're built with that technology in it. And I'm sure a lot more that I don't understand yet. Um, so anyway, from 4 to 6 last week, California time, I was so focused on getting my whole crew there and getting on this particular show, I was really doing more like trade show hosting work. Like I was, I was giving away s sunglasses and footballs, and we were, we had a big screen talking about making cities smarter and how our technology helped do that with specifics. And so there was a lot to pull together. And then at four o'clock their time, the curtain goes up and people come in for two hours, and it was packed. Well. At about 5.30 California time, which was about 8.30 this time, I got a text from my sister and she said, where are you? Where's Fibercast? I had completely spaced it out. And do you know I carried my extra special computer because of the problem I had two weeks ago. So I've carried a second computer all across, not really all across, but to two cities in California with the express purpose of having Fibercast. And there I was, completely spacing out on the trade show floor. And so I'm sorry about that. I was just so focused on, we had had a couple of all day sessions for county CIOs who run the computer systems on Thursday and Friday morning. And then, like I say, I had to run over and get the booth area ready. So, my bad. I was distracted. And my sister wrote it perfectly. It was that pesky little four-letter word that got in the way of last week's Fibercast. So, okay. So, I keep lacing away. I'm working on this. We'll be braiding before you know it. At least the good news is, although because of the time change it wasn't great, but at least I had the convention speeches to come home to at night in the hotels. But because of the time change, I missed a lot of them. I just saw one or two, and of course I was exhausted, so I fell asleep. But anyway, enough about me. I wanted to show you what Jean and Kelsey gave to me for my birthday just before I left in July. First is a magnetized pin holder with a squirrel in it. 
And we have this joke that when we're shopping, I don't know if you can see. Here we go. There's better. Sit squirrel. When we're in a fabric store or any fiber store, yarn, whatever it is, beads even probably, we jokingly will get distracted by anything that runs by. I think Sarah Kokonowski may have said squirrel first or Chris or maybe Kelsey or maybe Jean anyway or maybe even my sister Karen. So squirrel was the, the word of the day whenever we would see something new. So I now have a new pin holder and then this is a custom pillow. Can you see what's on it? Isn't that fun? It's like a futuristic camper with even a chenille top. Jean, I didn't even ask you if you had made up this pattern or where you had found it. The back is actually that some camper fabric. And it's so beautifully done. Look at this. I can actually wash it or change change my pillow cover. Jean, I love it. Elwin, check this out. It even has the wheel. I love it. So, Jean, 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 you might win this week. Unless Kelsey's playing, because Kelsey, Kelsey, Kelsey could win. <laughs> Okay, let's see. While we're at it, let's extend our thread. Remember this, our magic trick? Our one and only magic trick here is we will... So get yourself a needle. And I know I told you this wasn't a tutorial. Fibercast is never a tutorial. It's just all about what we can get done together in 60 minutes. It just... You can be doing anything. Many folks are just reading magazines or, of course, some of you might be asleep by now because it, it is at the end of a week. Now, let me remember. So, anyway, I'm all over the place. This is my trick. I'm turning. I finished with my lacing thread. This is special hollow thread that's used for lacing rugs. And now I am creating a longer piece. This is like fine, I suppose, for the phlebotomists out there, mom. I suppose this is akin to finding the vein. So you go in with your needle, pull the thread through a bit. I did not have to go through that far. Pull it out so it's just there. So just the end is so it's hidden almost. I'm gonna pull that tightly in a second. And then we go in the other side. Okay. Put on my glasses here. Didn't I have trouble with this last time too? Any trouble catching it? Here we go. Here we go. Okay, so I've just threaded down the center of the tube going the other way, and now I will thread the other end of the th thread through it for string. And now. When you pull it taut, it becomes one piece, and we've lengthened our thread. thread. There's no way technically you could call that a magic trick because it takes too long. <laughs> there isn't enough sleight of hand, that's for sure. Anywho, what's been going on? I think I just heard a, oh, I may have turned off my beeps on my phone. Let's see who's out there anyone. Hey! Oh, Chris Myers, hi! Chris says, greetings from Cape Cod. Oh, I'm so glad you called in. We have to make a date. Okay. She says, we've had a fabulous week. Week two starts tomorrow. Oh, 
Has the weather, you have been so lucky to be on the Cape. Yeah, I understand it's just been so hot here. And the pictures of you and Abby look great. And the sunsets down there, it's wonderful. Your braided rug is amazing. Aw, can hear the band. <laughs> can you? It's good to hear them. It's good to be home, man. Let's see. I had to log in there, see if there's the rest of the message. Can hear the boys downstairs, and, sh and Chris asks, what are you using for thread? It's this special rug braiding thread. I got this at Franklin Mill store, and it's like twine, but the, the catcher is, again, that it can expand a little bit, and it's hollow inside, so it's a woven thread. That's it. It comes in different colors. I don't need my phone, do I? I was going to the wrong place. Oh! Hi, Mom! I'm home! How are you? I hope you're well. Oh, this is good. Maureen says, hi, Maureen. How are you? She says, the only thing I'm making is plans to make my daughter's room my craft room. She's moving out this weekend. LOL. Well, congratulations on a whole lot of fronts. That's great. Oh, I can't wait to hear what you do. I'm just, I've been thinking about how to set mine up, and I was going to go do some Pinterest searching this weekend. I'd love to see what you come up with. To the flying pecan! Hello, pecan! Mary Beth says, I love the rug. Will the rug need anything on the back to keep it from sliding on the floor, she asks. Yes. I plan to put a rug pad underneath and cut it about an inch um, smaller in diameter than the rug. And then it will lay on it and it won't move. So it's that, that just rug padding that I will cut that's kind of corrugated looking. So good question. Oh, and, and Mary Beth says, I'm still working on the circle rag quilt baby blanket. Have a great weekend, she says. Mary Beth in Texas. You too. Fibercast, she says with a smile. I like that. Oh, Dawn, hi. World, world award winning author. Says, great progress on your rug. Thank you. I'm finishing a bolster pillow. Ooh, those can be tough, right? Because they're round. And I'm sewing the last sleeve on a quilt for the Marathon Quilt Show. Good to finish these projects, isn't it? So, she says, does rug braiding build extra muscles? LOL. Yes, it does, Don. And Don says, sending smiles. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I like to hear from you. And... The bolster pillow, I'm curious on the ends, are you doing piping? Are you doing the tie-off so it looks like a giant Tootsie Roll? And you're reminding me about the Marathon Quilt Show. I have to get my, subs my, my um, well, what are they? I was going to say subscriptions. But I have to enter the quilts. And I even have my sister's quilt, the Two Color Delight. So Joyce, Karen, and I are putting in the Simply Colorful Two Color Delight. Quilts. So we're going to have a red one, a pink one, and a black one. Our red and white, pink and white, black and white, all hanging up in the new cultural arts building. So that's our goal. And we should be there because we're all entering them, but I need to get on the stick and fill out my forms. So, I'm glo so glad you reminded me, Dawn. And now that I'm here for 16 days, I should be able to do it. Which gets me to Chris and our plan for next week. I'll text you and we'll make a plan. Okay, Beth Ellen. Hi, Beth Ellen. Allen, sorry. Beth Ellen. She says, hey, Lynn and Fibercasters. Hope all is well with everyone. Watching you and working on my 1,088 parens, yep, really, half square triangle for my piece quilt. Whoa. I'm having nightmares with triangles chasing me with butcher's knives. I need to find a pattern with curves in it next. Take care and happy stitching, Beth. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> yes. 
I'll be on the lookout for something curvy. That would be fun. You know what I've been wanting to do for a while is make my scrap fabric. So just sew strips randomly, right, from my scrap bag, just like strips. And then use my AccuQuilt cutter to cut it into either diamonds or tumblers or circles or something, and then put that on either a gray background or a very plain and neutral background. I thought that would be fun. It would be fun to look at and fun to just to use a way to use up scraps. Oh, and here is your circadia and quilt. Let's see, what's this called? Circadia and ospreys. Very neat. So quilt time, T-Y-M-E. I'm so glad everyone's out there. Okay, back to building up rug braiding muscles. So we have the long thread now. Christine got a pillow for her birthday, too. They had a giant squirrel on it. You would have loved it. Beth Allen, remember all those stops at Missouri Star Quilt? Talk about squirrels. Well, one of my favorite parts about this rug, rug braiding is picking out the colors. I've decided I like that part. But other than that, to tell you the truth, Aside from it being hard on my muscles, which it is, but those are to be built, um, I like picking out the colors, and yeah, I already said that. I think this will be my first and last rug. And I have to finish it by August 16th. So you can see that we're coming up on a change of colors, actually. I don't know if you can see this, but this, see this darker? I started it here, started going around. So I need to finish it about here and now transition into another ring of color. So this is fun. We're at a fun part. So the way I'm going to do that is, and what I'm doing is I'm also, I have decided to keep this green is consistent throughout at least this part. It's kind of like a gray. So I want to keep going with that. And then I have all of these darker colors that I still have little pieces of that I used in here. I think I want to keep going with darker. And then I think I want to add this dark in too. So it'll end up being pretty dark the next round. But that's good because then I want to put in, I want to go into this, which is a skirt. Remember this was only, I had one skirt that made, that's all it made. So this is why this takes a lot of outfits. Okay, so we have to transition it and do is... I'm identifying where I'm cutting the colors on two of the, no, only just one actually, just the light, and keep the other. Can you hear the band? They're playing a funky one now, I like it. Okay, there, we'll put that over there for now, and, okay, this was kind of fun. This came from a big piece of plaid fabric, and two of them are more purpley, so I'm going to use those two first. Let's see how that works, because this is more purple, so it'll kind of match a little bit. 
And then, so I literally have to drag this over to the sewing machine. And while I'm at it, I'm going to add on to these two. Oh, my soda. Has it been hot where you are? The whole country in the United States. Has been sweltering. My poor plants. Oh, Sue. Sue Norton, if you're out there, hi. And I know many of you are fellow gardeners. But Sue, I was thinking of you. When I came home, I immediately went around my garden just to see if I could see what was up. And there were some new lilies that hadn't bloomed when I had left. And it occurred to me that flowers are like old friends. And they're just it's just so fun to see when they spring up. It's really pretty darn amazing that they rejuvenate and the same plant can can bring such beauty every year over and over again. It's really remarkable. Of course, some of my other flowers in this drought and in this extreme heat did not get quite the attention they could have. It also looks like the deer have gotten in to one part of my garden over where I have my thistle, and it almost looks like someone took a nap in my blue glow thistle there. That's not good. They weren't invited. Okay, so there's that. We've extended that one. These are the easy ones because they're longer and I can I don't have to carry the whole rug over. Of course this one's short, so that would be more problematic. As you can see, I just cut it on the diagonal. And because we've done because we're quilters and we've done this so often. Watch, this is this will be my famous last words. It it doesn't take long to figure out how to join these on the bias. If you're new to creating bias tape, it might be harder, but that's one thing we got down. What else can I tell you? San Francisco is an exciting city. The office that we went into is on Market Street, right in downtown. And it's set up like a playground with, with some computers everywhere and low walls, very few doors. But there's the ping pong table, there's the basketball hoop, there are containers of junk food, unlike I've ever seen anywhere. That would be a terrible um, um, temptation for me if I were there. But literally, you know, they have an espresso machine and they have stocked refrigerator on a few floors, so it's like the old days when you used to go out to Redmond and see Microsoft's campus. It was pretty amazing. Salesforce.com is right next door, and RSA is there, and EMC, soon to be Dell EMC, and lots of young coders there, so we did the second one here. And um, I tell you, my nephew Tommy would be in heaven at one of those places. Oh, who's there? Okay. Hang on, I'm just gonna pull this over a little bit more. Imagine doing this on an even bigger rug. Okay. <laughs> I had my machine set on a one 
3.0 stitch because I did paper piecing the last time I sat here. We did a Dear Jane block, and I and so when I started to do this earlier tonight, it was taking forever to make my seam, and I realized I was still on my one 1.0 one stitch length. Okay, so I'll show you how I've been making my braids here. What you need to make the braid really tight is, is a clamp to hold it, and then you braid against it, and you make it very tight. So now that I have extended my three things that I need to braid, what I'm going to do is... Oh, Make sure to get this as tight as possible, and if I need to, I will unthread it, unlace it. I mean, no, we're good. So I'm just braiding out a little bit, and then I'm going to clamp it down to this book. It's one of my dad's old carving books that I just couldn't bring myself to bring to the dump. Or to, we gave away carving books, we tried to sell them, and this one was just so pretty. In fact, I'm going to show you some pictures, just for kicks. It's called The Great American Shooting Prints. Let's see, I'll just show you one. Oh, this is fun. Who's this? A. LaSalle Ripley. Isn't that an amazing picture? It's called Setting Out Decoys in the Marsh, done in 1941. In the pale morning light, the hunters have already seen small flights of black ducks and mallards scattering across the sky. There have been a few gadwalls, too, like undersized blacks in the distance, and there have been bald pates searching for wild celery. On this New England coastal march, the hunters also expect to see redheads and canvasbacks scudding over the wide waters. As they set out their decoys, they glance ruefully at three birds flaring toward the far shore. And it goes on. Oh, I see, and there are the three birds. And they even have a dog. There are the three birds up there. And the lab. So, anywho. The hunting life in America as portrayed in paintings and lithographs from the 1820s to the present. Oh, we have to look at one more. Just random. Oh, a Winslow Homer. That looks like now, if I had, I have no idea where that is. I was going to say out west. Nope, New York. Essex County, New York. Prospect Rock. That's where Winslow Homer hunted, fished, and camped. The bearded hunter here is Rufus Wallace, and the younger man probably Farmer Flynn. Adirondack guides who figured in many of Homer's watercolors. They were representatives of the region's hunters, trappers, fishermen, and loggers. That was done in 1892. Good art is timeless. Okay. So, gazing at pictures is not going to get our rug done. So, now we have a little bit of this has been braided, and I have lots of tails to braid. So now what I've been doing is I take this clamp, and I've been clamping it right to the book. Because the table itself is too thick for my clamp, the book is a good size. And it's big enough and thick enough and heavy enough that it seems to have been holding. So, now we just flip one folded braid over the other. And it gets tangled, but you just pull it apart. Especially in the early going, because all three of our strands are pretty long. We're making our color change, which is kind of fun. And if we did it right, mm -hmm. 
it will change color right at the right time and be hidden. The color change will be hidden under one of the braids. Well, we kind of did it right. Looks like maybe I pulled it too tight or not tight enough anyway. It's close enough. I guess that's a practice thing. I'm sure as you do more of this, you really get a feel for how stretchy different wool is. And because I've noticed my braid is not as consistent as I thought it might be across here. So then that means your seam is not going to always consistently be hidden. If I the first time I braided it was tighter or looser than the second time, if that makes sense. So I'm not getting consistency. Like when you first start spinning yarn. That first yarn you ever spin is gold, so keep it. For anyone who's out there just learning to spin, don't get discouraged. Literally save every piece you you spin because you'll never be able to create that bulky, inconsistent fiber again. Because you'll get better at it. Oh, they're jamming. Hi to everyone out there, by the way. To Elise, to Juliana, to Norma, to Marquet, to Patty in Texas, and KK out west, and Colleen, and Peggy down under, and Wendy down under, and Allie, and Jen. Anne and Lorna and Mary Beth and Mary Allen. Oh, I'm liking it. See the different color? I don't know if you can see it. It's darker. This is good. So every once in a while I have to pull this through. There we go. been having fun with this one playing with the colors and giving the eye places to rest in here and then with the pops of the red I'm liking that so I am going to do I'm going to insert another row of a couple of rows of red and then probably conclude it with this green and gray I don't think I'm going to go too much bigger. I think I'm going to use up the braids that I've made and go with it. This will go, I think, I think it's certainly up to Elise where it goes, but in her family's farmhouse that I should know when it was built. Maybe it was built a hundred years ago, if not a little more. They have braided rugs that Mabel Johnson made that Mr. Hillman recounted to us that his mother every fall would drop off wool fabric and clothing to her, pay her a down payment or a stipend or whatever it was, and she would make braided rugs over the winter, and then when they came back in the summer to the farm, the rugs would be available, and there are stories of them, the rugs including blankets that, that family members had slept with, and clothing and so when you go into the farmhouse today there are lots of these braided rugs scattered around so maybe this will replace an older one in fact Elise gave me a really old one that was just falling apart 
And so it'll be good. But these rugs don't last forever. They do last a long time if you do it right and you don't get any organic food in them so that the moths don't eat through them. But they don't last forever. Especially if you live on them, right? What are you working on? Are you staying cool? Just about ready to call it. I want to see what the purple looks like. Ooh, pretty. This purple's thinner than my other braids. Okay, see? You see the braid? Okay. Once I'm done braiding, I'll go check and see who's out there. Let me know if you want me to give a shout out to any of your family members if they're out there. All right, so I think I'm going to stop there. And then I have a second clamp that I put on the end there. Take this clamp off. Come back over here. Now let's lace up a few things. Make sure we're in the groove. You see that? That's going to be pretty. So the Queen Mary is docked in Long Beach. That is quite the ship. It's worth the take if you're in town and you want to go tour it. it there's even, you can even still sleep in it. There's a hotel in it. And I wish I knew more of the history. I can't even recount much of the history, although I could look it up. Oh, I know what else I wanted to talk about. The Olympics. Can you believe they start on August 3rd? So by next Friday, when we're back together, they will have already done some archery and some soccer. And I wanted to show you a really cool visualization of the schedule that I found. I have a knot here. Hmm. Okay, there's that. Let's see the schedule here. I wanted to show this to you. As I say, the Olympics in Rio start on August 3rd and they go to Sunday, August 21st. And if you go to NBCOlympics.com, you can see in one chart a listing of all the events, the dates, and then when the events happen and when the medal events happen. And then it looks like, so it's NBCOlympics.com, it looks like when they're live, they'll turn yellow. And I'm hoping that you can literally click on it and watch it right there. So for example, archery, starts next Friday when we're on, Friday the 5th of August. Gymnastics starts on the 3rd and 4th, so next Wednesday and Thursday they start, as does soccer next Thursday, uh, Wednesday and Thursday. And then as I say, you can go look, there's canoeing, cycling, diving, equestrian, NBCOlympics.com. Hello! <laughs> 
So let's lace this up as we go through. Let's see, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 14. I missed my 15, so I have to back up. Oh, and look at that, my magic trick did not hold. Okay, so all the more reason to back up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and that's 15. We have to skip that. That is interesting. I've been doing too much talking. Is that us? Too much talking and not enough braiding. That might have been my phone ding. Hang on. Okay, so we go down here, and like that. So now we've skipped the 15th one, and that creates the right amount of bow in our rug. Now we keep lacing it up, keep pulling it. I need to put my glove back on. Oh, no, first I need to extend my thread. So let's pull out our... <laughs> our needle. And remember, this is a hollow thread. And we go in about three inches from the bottom of the... The existing piece of thread we're going in the middle and I know you can't see this but I've gone through another couple of inches and now I pull it through and then I unthread it right so there's one half and now I have to go in the other end and it will it will create a longer piece of thread without a knot and that's what we want so we just can just keep lacing the rug without a knot and really in addition to it not feeling the knot not feeling good on your feet it really just helps the wear be more even okay so now I can pull that across and with luck it's more than luck there we go okay so let's Lace this up again. Oh, and I heard some dings. I'm going to go see who's out there. Let's see who's out there. So I showed you the Olympics file. Ah, oh, hearing stray cat strut. Yes, me too, Chris. They sounded good. <laughs> okay, let's see. Oh, there are a lot of you out there. KB, hi! KB says, aww. Thanks, KB. That's an heirloom in process. And she says, it's a good analogy about flowers and old friends. They also remind me of a box of Christmas ornaments. Every one you pull out of the box or every plant that blooms makes you remember the person, place, or time that it came from. Isn't that the truth? And you kind of, it's like you see it again for the first time. And as my memory goes even worse, it's going to be even better. It's going to be brand new. That's great, KB. Jean, hi, Jean. Jean says, the rug's looking great. It's really grown. She says, I'm working on Sarah's college t-shirt quilt. 86 pieces of t-shirts in a variety of sizes. Yikes. Oh, I bet it's going to be beautiful. BC, here she comes. And Chris, stray cat strut. Very good. All right, let me... We have to keep lacing here. I'm going to cut this off. And we'll just keep going. Hmm. 
So I mentioned the Queen Mary is in Long Beach. They also have a Ferris wheel that, and a merry-go-round. I can't say that I went on either of them, but they were fun to watch. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay, we left that one blank. I need a pen. 1, 2, 3... Oh, and now we're on row 16, so now I have to go 15 laces and then skip one. Oh, I hear the dog. Okay. And here we go. Everyone's plans for this weekend. Oh, what is going on here? Hmm. I'm going to have to do more magic there. Did you see what just happened? My string broke. Hey, hey, Carol Bell. Hi, Carol. She says, hi, Lynn and Fibercasters. It's nice to see you live this week. It's about a month since I've been able to see you live. Well, hello. I'm glad you're out there. Is it hot where you are? Or is it down under and it's heading into winter or into summer? No. It's winter now where you are. Okay. She says, hope that you and all the fiber casters are well. Tonight I'm pressing some garlic knot blocks that I've been using as leaders and enders while working on a full-size quilt in a day quick trip for my daughter. I upsized the Bonnie Hunter's garlic knot pattern to two and a half inch strips and have used up some of my jelly roll left hours. Yours, Carol. Oh, in Yorkshire, England. So it's late at night. Oh, those are great. Oh, my goodness. So can you see the top one? I love your scrappy. Oh, look at that Bargello. You said that's trip around the world, right? Yep. Full size quilt in the day, quick trip. Wow. Glad you're out there. Have a great weekend. Sue Norton, hi. She says, hi, Lynn. Glad you're home. Me too. She says, I'm watching with one eye open tonight. It's been a long week. Oh, I hear you. She says, I got a new laptop computer at work, and that's taken most of the week to migrate all of my files and download programs I need to do my job. Phew. Heard you talking about your garden, welcoming you home. Yep, it did. It's been very hot here, too, and a lot of the flowers are kind of waning, except for my sedums. Ooh, now I don't think mine are out yet. Most will bloom in the fall. We'll try to post some pictures of Dear Jane blocks in my next and my next Hexi project next week. Have a restful weekend. And that is from Sue. Thank you. You, too. A new laptop. It sounds like you did it the right way, and you just downloaded what you needed rather than everything on your old laptop. Enjoy your weekend and your flowers. Beth Allen. Ooh, you like the scrap quilt idea. Remember we were talking about making scrappiness and then running it through a either a triangle or a trapezoid or something through your quilt, um, quilt go. I'm really, really loving your rug, she says. Squirrels happen here, too. <laughs> Happy belated birthday. Thank you. Yes, squirrels are everywhere. What's up with that? Oh, KK says it's little old me, KK in San Diego, watching you from work, she says. The band sounds great and an amazing rug you're working on. Well, thank you. And thanks for saying hello last week. We weren't too far apart, were we? Joyce. Hi, Joyce Long, she says to you and the other fiber casters. Tonight, she says, I'm sitting back with my feet up after working today and grocery shopping. I'm trying to decide what quilt to make for my coworker that has decided to retire in December. Ooh, that's a fun thing to think about. Mm -hmm. Male, female, 
Do they have any hobbies? This is going to be fun. I have to admit that I'm intrigued by your rug making. I've never thought of doing one before. Thanks for Fibercast and hope everyone has a great weekend. I do too. I hope everyone has a great weekend. Well, look up rug grading. There are so many tutorials on YouTube. And like I say, I think this is my first and last one. <laughs> but I'll pull a few loops through. And maybe for, for the last thing we do before we wrap it up, I am going to try to connect these two pieces of thread again. This is my third try, so I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Or if the humidity is causing it not to catch. Here we go. Bring that through. Oh, there goes the band. They'll regale us with their music while we round out Fibercast. Next time on Fibercast, it will be August. We'll be starting the Olympics. So remember to go look for that chart I mentioned, NBCOlympics.com. Not that I'm promoting or have any affiliation with them. It's just really well done. And um, it will be fun to see athletic excellence. Think of folks as passionate as we are about our fiber and our quilting and our arts. Those athletes are about their sports. They've done it their whole lives. Just think of how practiced and at the top of their game they are. Okay, so I think I think I caught it this time. And I'm gonna cut off these extras. Um the only other thing I would say is try to stay cool this weekend. Reach out to family and friends who who may be hot and need help cooling down. Make sure they're all okay. And do something you enjoy doing. And I think that that is about it for Fibercast. Thanks for keeping me company. I really appreciate it. It's amazing what we get done in 60 minutes. Have a great weekend, and I'll see you here next Friday night at 8 p.m. Eastern. Bye, everyone.